So we want we want Brother Matt to come up to the stage, Joe's dad, and glad to in and just obey the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Well, greetings, praise church. I bring from uh, NB Church all the way up in the north. I apologize for some shorts today. I hope it doesn't offend you, but this northern boy is going to melt, okay? This is just too much. I got to work today a little bit. Uh, I was going to either go shopping with the girls or go hang with the guys working, doing some framing. So I got to go help a little bit today, uh, just hand some boards in and stuff. But God sent my son, Joel, at lunchtime to make a way of escape for me and uh, bring me out because dumb old me would have just stayed and I think I would have been in the emergency room tonight with heat exhaustion if I'd have stuck around much longer but uh, so good so good to fellowship but uh, I do honor the bishop and honor the leaders of the house and I see such growth in this place as I come back year to year amen not just in Joel's family growth uh, with uh, our newborn our my first grandson come on man hey what an awesome name, and we're just so blessed, and uh, so blessed by the exhortation and, and the worship tonight. And I want to just uh, just to bring a encouragement and a, I guess just a, a great job to the media team, the sound team, the production. I watch online; you guys are doing fantastic. Keep it up; it's not going unnoticed. And uh, I share the church with others, and they think it's this giant church. So, I um, mean, it's a, but we have a giant God, and we, it's, we do an excellent spirit. We do all we can with an excellent spirit, and you guys are doing it. So, keep it up, Amen. But uh, I just want to just kind of bounce off of what was saying uh, tonight, and you know the difference between an exhortation and a sermon is about. 30 minutes okay so that's about the main difference so that's what you're getting tonight but uh pastor chad yeah he pulled a little fast one on me he come up to visit us their surprise visit a little while ago and uh i come home from a wrestling tournament and the, the whole family's hiding in the dining room i did not know they were in there and, and i'm like pastor chad you're preaching tomorrow right it's late saturday night and he's i'm on vacation I said, well, at least you're going to sing. You're going to sing. So I got him to sing, and um, but then he, he texted me and said, you're preaching Wednesday. And I said, I'm on vacation. I heard that, that worked for you, but uh, so it didn't work for me. Uh, but anyways, uh, just just so good to be with you guys tonight, be with family. And uh, we love you. I want to just bring a, a, just a word of encouragement to you this, to this evening. But uh, God spoke something to us. We transitioned into lead pastor role about three years ago, a little over three years ago. And I served under my dad for many, many, my whole life. And uh, for 20 years was the worship pastor. And, and God began to do a work as he began to prepare me to pastor. And it's something he spoke into my spirit one time. I kind of woke up in the middle of the night and wrote it down. He said, bring the pulpit to the people. So this is just bouncing off what Pastor Chad said. Bring the pulpit to the people. For the pulpit is not just a piece of furniture on, a, on an area we call a platform in a church. But the pulpit is the place that the word of God is proclaimed. And it's time to bring the pulpit to the people. Each and every one of you have a pulpit. Preach the word in your schoolhouse, in the workhouse, in, the, in your hobbies, on your street, in your neighborhood. Preach the word amen hallelujah not just on a microphone in a, in a, a play a building we call a church i wish we could kind of go back in time and take that out of our vernacular because we don't attend church i end service every sunday with you've been to service now go be the church amen we learned through covid the church is not a building is the church is never closed amen we're never closing because it's not a building it's a people and that god is building it jesus is building it Hallelujah. But but it's time to take the pulpit to the people. The other thing he spoke to me, he says, it's time to bring the altar to the people. The altar is not just an area that separates the well, an, uh, the platform from the chairs in, in a church building. Come on. But it's where people encounter the presence of God. It's time to bring the altar to the people. And they, you can encounter it at Walmart. You can encounter it on the street. You can encounter it anywhere because God is everywhere. It's where they encounter the presence of God. And if you'll be faithful to open your mouth, he will be faithful to fill it. Yes. Something as simple as just taking the notes from Pastor's Sunday sermon and sharing that on Monday. Every Monday at work, you get asked, hey, how was your weekend? Or somebody asks you throughout the week, man, if you don't have anything else to say, you have something to say. You have a message. And just say, man, I, well, actually, I was at church the other day, and, and uh, Pastor preached, he said this. And really? And man, you don't know where that could lead. And it's so many great conversations have started um, through people in our church from just sharing the notes from the Sunday sermon. So I encourage you to, to do that and take notes. But I want to share just a brief uh, word of exhortation tonight of, uh, 
uh, just just something that God has spoken to me. So not really a sermon, but it was an excerpt of a, of a sermon I, I preached recently. But God has just been working in our lives and in our family, and uh, just some, some some things have risen up in our family, and we have been in a season of brokenness, a season of brokenness. And the songs were so good tonight that you are good, man. Awesome, awesome. Just really kind of confirms the word, but. Uh, I, I don't even know if you guys end with a song, but if we do, I would request to kind of end with that. But just he is so, so good in the morning, in the evening, no matter what is going on, he is so good. And, and in the season of brokenness, God is so faithful to speak. And uh, one morning I woke up with something and, and wrote it down and I shared it with my wife in the morning. And in, in a season of brokenness, I heard these words, when I am broken, I will remember the word you have spoken. See, when you're a preacher, if your points start with the same letter or if they rhyme, it just drives it home even more. And so many times when God speaks to me, it's, it's, it's like that. It just rhymes. But, but anyways, the truth is when I am broken, I will remember the word you have spoken. And it wasn't even coming from me, but it was just does something down in my spirit down inside of me, just rising up and saying, I will remember the word you have spoken. See, in the darkness, when you don't know what to do, I want you to pull out the word. I, mean, I was on, on the, the, the pastor, Brother Joe Crandall, over the Bible college. We went, and he would get on the pulpit, old preacher, and he would just, just shout. And he'd say, you can stand on the word when your world's on fire. You can stand on his word. So I want you to remember to pull out the word. When, out, when you don't know what else to do, bring out his word. Why? Because Psalms 119, 105, just a few verses I'm going to read tonight. Psalms 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. But not only this, see, I love to, to take verses and put them together with another verse from over here. There's another verse, and you could do this kind of exponentially and just keep going on and on. But just one other verse, Ephesians 6, 17 says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So in those two verses, we have the word is a lamp, it's a light, and the word is a sword. Come on, it's a sword that glows. Come on, George Lucas and Star Wars did not invent the lightsaber. Jesus did. Come on, God did. Amen. It's a sword that glows. It's a sword that lights up. It's a tool and it's a weapon. Hmm. I want you to wield the word. We don't hear that word wield too, too often. Wield the word. That's what you do with a sword, man. You, you wield it. You wield the sword. Wield it. I want you to begin to wield the sword. Amen? Wield the sword. Use it to fight the good fight of faith. See, we're in a good fight. A good fight. A good fight of faith. So when you wield the, the word of God, when you wield the sword, come on, you can make fear and doubt flee. You can make it flee in your life. You can make it run. When you declare the word of the Lord, I want each and every one of you to know you are a preacher. <laughs> you are a preacher, each and every one of you, young and old. I've seen young people preach. I've seen older people preach. I've seen people that never held a microphone begin to preach. But I want you to know something about preaching. <laughs> the best sermon you will ever hear will not be from this pulpit. As awesome as Pastor Chad is, as awesome as his dad is, as awesome as many of the guest ministry you bring in, the best sermon you hear will not be on the most viewed YouTube or, or Twitter or, or any uh, other thing, any other platform that's invented. Uh, some great clips that can be made of T.D. Jakes and all these awesome preachers. And, and That will not be the best sermon you will ever hear. I want you to know that the best sermon you will ever hear is the sermon you preach to yourself is the sermon you preach to your situation. That is the most powerful, most life-changing, most dynamic sermon you will ever preach, you will ever hear, is the sermon that comes within your spirit. When you begin to take that sword and you begin to defend your house, when you begin to proclaim the word of God over what's yours and is his, preach, preacher, each and every one of you, young and old, man and woman, no matter you went to Bible school or not, no matter how long you've known him, you can preach his word no matter the situation preach his word see david said soul magnify the lord it wasn't just written for others this is what he was speaking to himself soul magnify the lord 
1 Samuel 30, verse 6 says, Now David was greatly distressed. <laughs> I think this is understated. For the people spoke of stoning him because of the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. See, this, this is so understated. <laughs> the, the mighty men that served, the mighty men of valor that did all these exploits, that killed thousands and hundreds and did awesome things, these men were about to kill David. <laughs> These men that served David, these men that, that, that went to war for David and alongside of David, all of a sudden, we're like, man, we've been serving you, we've been following you, and this is where you've led us? I'm tired of it. I'm done with it. We're going to use our weapons against you. I would be more than slightly perplexed and distressed. <laughs> And it says it goes on, and if you've got a, a paper Bible or a Bible in your app, the only want you to highlight this next part of the verse. It says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. So many different angles you can go for. And see, this wasn't anybody else's God. This was his God. This is my God. I, I was, a, um, I've been a PK my whole life, a preacher's kid. And I've been told so many times that God doesn't have any grandkids. He's only got children. You can't come on the coattails of your mama or father, but it was his God, his God. David turned and he strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Another translation says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. I, mean, I, 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 I am a, a kind of, words is one of my love languages. And I love it if my wife says, man, you did a great job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. One of the uh, just, just words, it, it builds in you. Uh, one time when I was working just 17 hour days for a couple weeks in a row and just, just slaving at work and go, going hard at work. And we had young kids in the house. We had uh, eight children. And uh, a lot of times we had those, those crayons in the bathroom. Anybody ever have those crayons? You can color on the bathtub walls. We've got little ones. And it was just a fun thing. You just continue the picture from the next person, you know, and just keep drawing on the walls in the shower. And you wipe them off and start over again. And my wife did something that stuck with me forever and affected me. And as I come home late one night from work, I go in to take a shower and I turn and there's a letter to me on the back wall of the shower saying, we love you so much. Thank you for all you do for our family, how you're an example and you work so hard to provide for us. And, and just, just those words to me right now, years later, there was empower, there was strengthening, they blessed me so much. But not only the thought that she was speaking unto me, but every one of my children, for we had 10 people in the house and one shower, okay? That's a miracle in of itself. <laughs> Some of my kids went to, off to college and, and they, well, they didn't go off, they, they commuted and somebody got mad at us and said, you need to let them experience dorm life. I'm like, dude, they lived in a house with 10 people in one shower. We live dorm life, okay? <laughs> but, uh, uh, but every one of those kids that took a shower re turned around and read those words from mom to dad and it impacted them and infected them and it's just so so powerful but we love to hear words from other people but sometimes you need to encourage yourself in the lord <laughs> amen encourage himself in the lord it says uh I want you to preach to fear, doubt, and unbelief. So much so they either get saved or get tired of hearing it. Amen. I, I had a mama that would just preach. I don't care what's going on right now. You're going to preach the word, son. You're going to be a worship leader, son. I heard it so many times. And they've come to pass. Oh, preach the word preach the word. I'm going to say something and, and I know it's okay because I've heard Pastor Chad's preaching, but and don't listen to so much of what I say, but hear my heart. I want you to preach the word. Preach the word to your situation. I want you to preach the hell out of your situation. You understand what I'm saying? Preach it out of your mind. Preach it out of your workplace. Preach it out of your house. Preach it out of your situation. Hell has no place here. No place here. Come on, I'm just giving an exhortation today. I'm not preaching. Uh, come on, these words didn't originate in me. This Bible that you have in your lap or the app on your phone, they didn't originate with us, but they will be repeated in me. Come on, they will be repeated in me. I say it all the time, don't put a dam in the river of God. What God is doing in you, he wants to do through you. Share your testimony. Share what God's doing and repeat the words that you hear in this house and through the word of God. Repeat them, proclaim them. Hallelujah. These are the words of heaven. They are the word of the Lord. 
I love that the Bible says he's the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Come on, he's not afraid of a fight. Never back down. He's undefeated. King of kings and Lord of lords. His word didn't start with me and it will not stop with me. His word will go forth from generation to generation. Amen. Are there any preachers in the house tonight? Come on, you may have walked in these doors thinking I'm not a preacher. I want you to leave these doors saying I'm a preacher tonight. Young and old, no matter your background, no matter the situation, I'm a preacher. I'm going to preach the word. I'm going to preach the hell out of my situation. There is no place for you in my life. My mama raised me on the verse, give no place to the devil. Give no place. You don't invite a serpent in and tell him to behave. It's not in his nature. Somebody said tonight about the uh, uh, lie, the, the enemy. Some, I was always raised on it. How do you know the devil's lying? His lips are moving. The truth is not in him. Are there any preachers in the house? I want to ask you tonight, is there anyone tonight that is willing to stand at the door of their home? Come on with that sword in hand. Hallelujah. And say, get off my property. Amen. Are you willing to stand there and say, you don't belong here? Leave my children alone. Get out of my life and begin to wield the sword, the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Preach, preacher. Get off my porch. <laughs> Get off my porch. You'll not have not one member of my family. Come on, when I am broken, I will remember the word you have spoken. I will not forget in the dark that which I knew in the light. It is the truth. It is the truth. I, I say, I heard a long time ago, I repeat it many times, the hell happening around you is no match for the heaven that's within you. No match. <laughs> no match. Uh, and one more little thing I say all the time, just these are, you're getting many clips of a sermon in one, but never mistake God's silence for his absence. Never. He's working. When you can't trace him, you trust him. The book of Esther, I heard this a little while ago, and I had to look, whenever I was talking to Joel this week a little bit about preaching, and there's certain things you hear that are almost too good to preach. You know, like, that's, that lines up super good. Is that true? Like, yeah, you know, and sometimes evangelists, you know, use a little uh, in, insert things. And so I always want to search it out for myself. And I heard this, and I had to search out for myself and read this through. And in the book of Esther is 10 chapters, I believe 167 verses in the book of Esther. Great story, amen? How many heard they've made it in a movie? Awesome. It's my, fav my, my wife's favorite character in the Bible, favorite story. It's amazing. But in the entire book of Esther, not one time is God mentioned. Not one time is Jehovah named. Not one time is Elohim or the creator of all things or all these different names ever mentioned. You know, he's not mentioned, but you can see his fingerprints through the entire story. When you can't trace him, trust him. He's working. I will not mistake his silence for his absence. Come on, there's 400 silent years between the Old Testament and the New Testament. You know, God was not absent. He is with you. He is with you. He is with you. Come on, a sword has two edges. Amen. And our message is two messages, is twofold. To the world, to the lost, is come. It's welcome home. I went to a church, New Beginnings in Slidell. We always go to, uh, for years, I went to an outreach in New Orleans during Mardi Gras before I even knew you guys. We were so close. And we'd come down and preach, and we would go up to different churches on, on a Sunday and minister. And one of the churches was New Beginnings in Slidell. And the, the pastor had a, uh, a hand that would rotate, a robot, robotic hand. He lost it in a boat on the Mississippi. He was trying to push it off a sand barge and slipped under. But he, he always told everybody he got bit by an alligator. It was a much funner story. Uh, but uh, uh, in, in that church, on the front sign, when you walk in, it said, Welcome home, all is forgiven. And I'll never forget that. It just it hit me. Like, that's such an awesome message. Welcome home, all is free. See, our, our message to the lost is welcome. It's, it's come. It's salvation. Amen? But see, there's another edge to that sword. And it's to the enemy of your soul. It says, get your hands off God's property. Yeah. 
See, we need to remember we, 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 we yield a sword, not a knife, a sword, not a dagger, a sword. It's two edges to the world to come. Come on. Healing is here. God is here. Salvation is here. It's all is forgiven. But to the enemy of your soul and mine is get your hands off God's children. Your children, my children, his children. Get your hands off, devil. Come on, he is the deliverer. In the Old Testament, we read of the deliverer Moses. Come on, his message was twofold. To, to, to Israel, it was that God's going to deliver us to a land flowing with milk and honey. Come on, but to Pharaoh, it was to let my people go. Twofold message. The sword. Wield it, church. Wield it. Proclaim it. Preach, preacher. Something I, I'm learning just recently and beginning God to allow to work on, see, for a year and a half or so, especially in the last solid year, it was just preach in pain. Be faithful when you're hurting. And God was faithful. It was amazing. It, I, he really he showed his faithfulness to us. And many times I just said, God, I, I don't, I'm so broken, I can't even preach. I don't have nothing to say. And God began to fill my notes. Even when I didn't feel nothing, just fill my notes. And I said, God, if you'll keep filling my notebook, I'll keep repeating what you say. And the power of God would just come on you and anointing when you preach. And I'd be ministering out of pain. And some of my church members were like, Pastor, this is the best preaching you've ever done. And that's because it's not me. I'm weak. I'm broken. But God's coming through the cracks, baby. And uh, just through this season, I thought, it was just the status quo. And I thought, really, this is just how it's going to be for the rest of my life. I thought it was just an acceptable status quo. We're just going to hurt until this is fixed or hurt forever. And God began to do a work just recently in our, in our life that this is not the new normal. See, Psalms tells us that God is near to and heals the brokenhearted. See, we need to remember the word of the Lord. And no, it's not just for others. I'm a preacher. I believe it for others. I prayed for it for others. We had recently, um, last fall, our, our dog of how many years? 11 years or so. Wonderful member of our family. Dog passed away or didn't pass away. We had to put her down. Cancer just covered her whole body. And doctors said, can't vets it, can't do anything about it. You put her down. We're like, can we have a weekend? You know? And we just really, it was horrible. I don't know if anybody ever had to do that. It's a horrible situation. Well, just recently, um, we had uh, uh, somebody come into the church a few times that had a service dog. And they're new to the church and new to everything. And, and they called me and said, I'm going to come back. I'm in town visiting my mother. mother can, I, can I bring the service dog with me? And I said, yes. And, and it's a giant German shepherd, beautiful dog, big. And, and uh, beginning of praise, woo, woo. You know, it started, and I was like, hey, if the rocks won't, or if I won't praise them, the rocks will cry out, maybe the dogs too. So I just laughed, and, and uh, but they called and said, he's, he's, he's got cancer all throughout his body, and would you pray for him? And I thought, yes, we'll pray. And I was like, I just put my dog down for cancer, but I have faith for your dog. And we knelt. And we prayed for their, we had an altar call for anyone to come up and they came up with their dog and it was, it was interesting, right? And uh, I knelt down and prayed for this beautiful German shepherd and the, the mom is, is weeping and we stood up and we ministered to her and prayed with her and, and she knew there's a church that doesn't just care about her, but cares about what she cares about and God cares. And, and I thought, boy, if, if God raises this dog up, we're going to have a dog healing ministry, man. I'm like, Oh, Lord, I don't know if I want to go viral for that, but uh, whatever. However you want to do it, God. But see, it's something I, I, I thought almost this healing was available for everyone else, but not me. I was so blinded by hurt that I didn't even know healing was an option. I believe it for you. I believe it for others. I prayed for it for others. But in our life, I thought this is just the new normal, that this is just how it has to be that I have to go through life without this now. That it would never be complete. See, no matter how hopeless the situation looks, my hope is not in the situation. My hope is in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Wield the word, preacher. Wield it over your family. One of my uh, 
most impactful moments growing up in the youth group at our church is we would go a few times to a friend of ours, a uh, Christian fa family. They went to another church, but we were friends with this family for a long time. And their sons, two sons had MS and many other diseases and never left the wheelchair as a baby, as a toddler, as a young man. And was st was said he'd never lived till teens and lived till really, the, I think one was 40, the other one was right around that same age. And these men, through a trach would lead Bible study. And this guy is flat on his back, writing Bible study curriculum for churches all over. And we would come into his room at his house, it looked like a hospital room, and, and he would be filled with such joy and weeping as he led the class. And I remember just sitting back, that man was not broken. He was complete in Jesus. He had a joy, a fulfilledness that touches me today. Peace that passes all understanding. Man, so, so good. When I am broken, I will remember the word you have spoken. And that word says I'm not to live in constant state of brokenness. That word says I'm not to live in a constant state of pain. That though there might be some things missing, he fulfills every need in his presence is fullness of joy pleasures forevermore and it's available for my family and it's available for yours it is available he is the healer he is with you he is with me that's my word of exhortation tonight with you when i am broken i will remember the word you have spoken love you praise church